These people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together, they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads. And challenging our resident quiz champions today are Yartek Thistle. Now, this team of friends are all members of the Glasgow Doctor Who Society and profess to get all of their general knowledge from the stories of Doctor Who. That could be very useful. Let's meet them. Hello, I'm Alan. I'm 41 years old and I'm a senior insolvency administrator. Hi, I'm Deirdre. I'm 42 and I'm a finance officer. Hello, I'm David. I'm 22 and I'm a freelance filmmaker. Hello, I'm Barry. I'm 29 and I'm a general manager. Hi, I'm Kenny, I'm 38, and I'm a newspaper reporter. Alan and team, welcome. Good to see you. Hello. Hi. So Hi. You've, you've got Hello. Doctor Who in common, is that right? Yes, yes. yes. We're, uh, we're all members of the Glasgow Doctor Who Society, so that's how we all met. And you're not the only members, there are more, are there? No, no, um, we have about 150 members online and uh, regular meetings with between a dozen and two dozen people. And when you, when you talk about the Doctors, do you all... Is it like James Bond, where everybody says, oh, it's Sean Connery or Daniel Craig, who's the best? Do you all have a, a definite Doctor? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Go it's, on. Well, my favourite is Colin Baker, um, which is a controversial point of view. But <laughs> OK, I'm going to have to go down the line, Deirdre. Peter Davison. David Tennant. Mm. Sylvester McCoy. Tom Baker. Oh, we've got a good mix there, my yeah. goodness. But tell us about the, the team name, the Yartek Thistle. <laughs> yes, well, like I say, we're all uh, Doctor Who fans. Uh, we're all from in or around Glasgow. And, of course, there's a, a football team in Glasgow called Partick Thistle, uh, better known as Partick Thistle Nil. Uh, <laughs> and, and there was a, a character in a 1964 Doctor Who story, The Keys of Marinus, called Yartek, the leader of the alien Vurd. So, Yartek Thistle. And hopefully it won't be nil. If, if a Doctor Who question doesn't come up, in this content, I am going to be... I'm going to personally apologise to you. I feel we <laughs> must have one. So good luck against the eggheads. They're more frightening than the Daleks, and they can go upstairs as well. <laughs> Every day there is a £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challenges. However, if they fail to defeat the eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So, Yartek Thistle, the challengers won the last game, which proves it can be done. That means £1,000 says you can't beat the eggheads. Do you want to try? Oh, oh yes. definitely. They're in the mood to get themselves back on track, I can tell you. The first head-to-head -head battle is on the subject of film and TV. Who would like this? I'll go for this. David, David is our media man, so... And David. I think I'll go in as Judith. Perfect. So it is David from Yartek Thistle versus Judith from the Eggheads. How are you and your Doctor Who, Judith? Very bad. I haven't watched it for ages. I mean, Colin Baker, I think. Oh, no, um, Colin... John the Pertwee. one with the scarves. Baker, yeah. Is that oh, Colin Baker? Tom Baker. Tom Baker, Tom Baker that yeah. That was my era. I think that says all we need to know <laughs> about Judith's knowledge <laughs> of Doctor does. Who. But to ensure there's no conferring, would you please take your positions in the question room? OK, film and TV. And, David, you can choose. Would you like to go first or second? I'll uh, take the bullet and go first. Here we go. In the 2012 film Life of Pi, a zookeeper's son and a tiger share which type of transport? Is it hot air balloon, horse and cart, or lifeboat? It's a lifeboat, Jeremy. Have you seen it? Yes. Lifeboat is right. Judith, your question. Which British actress married the Hollywood actor Michael Douglas in 2000? Is it Catherine Zeta-Jones, Rachel Weisz, or Anna Friel? I always get these who married who questions. Um, well, Catherine Zeta-Jones. Yes, there we are. Wasn't so bad. No. David, your question. Which actor's first big break was playing the title role in the 1990 TV miniseries, Chancer? Is it Sean Bean, Daniel Craig, or Clive Owen? Oh. I, mm, I don't think it could be Clive Owen. Because if I think, if I remember correctly, his, he's, his first big... Film, uh, film role was in a uh, Polyakov film, Close My Eyes. Daniel Craig, I think his first 
big thing was our friends in the north. I don't think it's him. Really, just don't know at all. So I thought I'm going to have to just go for Sean Bean because I don't, I don't think I've heard of uh, the other two being in something like that. You're right to rule out Daniel Craig because, because yes, Friends in the North was the, the big one for him. Clive Owen is the answer though. <sighs> Clive Owen. Judith in the 1998 film Hideous Kinky, Kate Winslet's character leaves London to live in which country with her two daughters? Fiji, Thailand, or Morocco? Oh, I know. That's about Emma Freud, isn't it? Her childhood, I think. Um, and they went to Morocco. Morocco is the right answer. <clears throat> so, David, she's playing well, and you need to get this one right, or you will have been knocked out. But many, many good people have been knocked out by Judith on film and TV. The 1968 film Pachulia, directed by Richard Lester, starred which actress in the title role? Angie Dickinson, Julie Christie, or Catherine Deneuve? Ah, well, unfortunately, I'm truly stumped, as I have never heard of this film. No, I never, I don't, I don't know this film. Um, something to me says that it's Angie, Angie Dickinson, but I think I'll go for Julie Christie because it's the only person I can think of working at that time. Julie Christie is correct. Well done, David. I thought you were just going to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory there, but you, you stayed, stayed with it. Judith, your question. The TV drama The Hour, set in a television newsroom during the Cold War, was created by which writer? Is it Abby Morgan? Lucy Preble or Andrea Arnold? Um, oh dear, I'm very bad at. You can never see the credits as they go because they go past far too quickly. Um, but I have a feeling. I think it's Abby Morgan. You've got it right. Abby Morgan is the answer. Sorry, David. Been knocked out there by Judith with three. It's very hard when they get three in a row. So you won't be in the final, and Judith will. Please, both of you, return to your teams. So we're about to play on. Judith, by the way, the film we mentioned, Hideous Kinky, was not Emma Freud, it was... Anyone? Esther. Esther, Esther, Esther Freud. Freud. I, well, I knew it was somebody Freud, with beginning with an E. And, and she's married to the, an actor, you will probably know, David es Morrissey. Oh, is she? Yeah, apparently. So it was her story. So as it stands, Yartek Thistle have lost one brain from the final round. The Akers have not lost a brain, but there's all to play for still, and it's geography now. Who would like this? <sighs> That'll have to be me who fancies that. Very, I'll, very... I'll go for it. Mm -hmm. Barry, Barry. Yep. Yeah. Barry, yeah. Barry, against which egghead? Anyone but Judith. Shall we Shall go, go for, for Shall I go for Pat? Yeah, let's go for Pat. Yep. OK, so it's Barry from Yartek, Thistle versus Pat from the eggheads. And to ensure there's no conferring, would you please take your positions in the question room? We're going to play geography now. And Barry, would you like to go first or second? I think I'll keep the precedence that David set and I'll go first. Here is your question. On which river is the city of Berlin located? Is it the Spree, Volga, or Oder? Um, for some reason, I don't think the Spree is actually uh, related to that. For some reason, I've got in my head it's the Volga, and I'm going to go for down the middle for the Volga. It's not actually, it's the Spray or Spree. Mm. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> Pat, how many US states begin with the letter T? Is it two, four, or five? Well, this is one of those questions for which you need just a bit of patience. Um, Tennessee and Texas, we're off for two. Can we find any more? Up the East Coast, Vermont, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, uh, Maryland, Carolinas, Georgia. Oh, I think it's two. It is too. I love you just crisscrossing the states there in your mind. And you can do the map in your head. It's amazing. OK, Barry, your second question. The town of Lemster is traditionally considered to be in which county? Is it Bedfordshire, Herefordshire or Wiltshire? Lemster. It's, it's obviously spelled L-E-O-M-I-N-S-T-E-R, Lemster. Um, I'm going to have a go punt in the dark. I say Wiltshire. It's, it's not, actually. It's Herefordshire. Right. So bad luck, Barry. Pat, to your question, and if you get this right, you're in the final round. The Avenue of the Baobabs is a tourist attraction on which island? Is it Madagascar, Cuba, or Sri Lanka? Well, I haven't heard of this avenue. You do get Baobabs on mainland Africa, 
but they're particularly associated with Madagascar. So have I any reason to go anywhere else? Cuba, Sri Lanka? No, I think I have no choice but to go with Madagascar. And what is a baobab? It's um, almost like an inverted tree. It's got a colossal trunk and uh, sort of spindly branches and it uh, can store enormous quantities of liquid in its trunk for periods of drought. Really? They're very distinctive trees. Interesting. Madagascar is the right answer. Very well played, Pat. I'm sorry, Barry, you've caught him on excellent form there. That can happen with these eggheads. You, it might be time to call for the Daleks, you know? Possibly, yep. Or, so, or the Yartex, whatever it is that's <laughs> going to take them out one at a time. Barry, do come back to us. Pat, come back to us and we'll play on. So, as it stands, Yartek Thistle have lost two brains from the final round. The Eggheads have not lost any. Where do we go from here? We go to politics. Would you like to do politics? Who would like this? Oh, would have been me. Be <laughs> oh, I'm I'm too early. Early. Do you want to do politics just in case sports comes up? That's a good point. Uh, we better just... Yeah. Uh, no, we better just... <laughs> that one yes. Yeah. Nobody in the glass door to his sight can do sports. <laughs> so, right. So, so uh, are we doing the... Okay. Okay. Not no. right. So, Deirdre, before you go, Deirdre, then, against which egghead? So, uh, let's go for Barry. OK. Barry, please. OK, so Deirdre from Yartek Thistle versus Barry. You had a whole series of games when you weren't being picked, Barry, and now yes, you're so well back, yeah. being picked all the time. Barry from the Eggheads. To ensure there's no conferring, please take your positions. OK, so Deirdre, would you like the first or second set of questions? I think I'd like the first set, please. Here we go. Good luck to you. The fear of communist sympathisers during the Cold War was often expressed using which phrase? Is it reds in the cupboard? Reds on the shelf or reds under the bed? I have heard this phrase, so I'm pretty sure it's reds under the bed. Reds under the bed is correct. Well done. It's a very polite Doctor Who applause coming your way. <laughs> Barry, which of these countries became a member of NATO in 2004? Is it Jamaica, Bulgaria or Egypt? Well, NATO is the North Atlantic Treaty Organisation. So I think that would rule out Egypt. I can't imagine Jamaica would be a become a member of, Jamaica, of, of NATO. I think I'm going to go for Bulgaria. Bulgaria is correct. OK. Over to you, Deirdre. Which British political party moved its London headquarters from Cowley Street to Great George Street in 2011? Is it Conservative, Labour or Liberal Democrat? I'm not sure of this one, but I've got a hunch. And I couldn't tell you why I've got a hunch. I think it's Conservative. I'm afraid it's Liberal Democrat. OK. Barry, to take the lead, who was installed as the unelected Italian Prime Minister in November 2011? Is that Mario Monti, Romano Prodi, or Giorgio Napolitano? Well, I don't know who Giorgio Napolitano was, but Romano Prodi was, a, was an Italian Prime Minister, but he was much earlier. The one who was install, installed in recently was Maria Monti. Mario Monti is the right answer. Good answer. So he's taken the lead, which means, Deirdre, you need to get this one, OK? In 2011, which country's government lost a vote of no confidence after being found to be in contempt of parliament? Was it South Africa, Canada or Australia? I am desperately trying to remember what my Australian friends have been saying on Facebook over the last couple of years. Um, I am going to... I'm going to go for another hunch and say Australia. Barry, do you know this one? I think I would have gone for South Africa. No, actually, Canada is the answer, Deirdre. Consolation that our egghead didn't know it, but I'm afraid, as there's no way back for you, you will not be in the final round of Barry Will. Both of you, please come back and rejoin your teams. The Artec Thistle have lost three. The eggheads have not lost a brain so far. The next subject, the last subject before the final round, is sport. Oh, That's good, isn't it? <laughs> the plan actually came off. It is not for well, nothing. Come <laughs> so this is Kenny now. Yes. I think it's Kenny. Is, Kenny is he's a rarity amongst Doctor Who fans because he knows what sport is. <laughs> well, can we so, clarify? I know what football is. <laughs> I don't know what cricket is. We're Scottish cricket. Okay. No, we don't it's an insect, isn't it? 
which uh, <laughs> we can, cr the cricket the insect is unlikely to come up in the sport round, but we'll see. We we'll never know. So Kenny, against which egghead? It can be Chris or Kevin. I think I'd like to try Chris, please. Okay, so it is Kenny from Yartek Thistle versus Chris, who likes his sport. Sometimes. No, I'm not getting, really. Getting quite good at it. Yeah, he's won a few on sport recently. Mm -hmm. Please go to the question room and we'll quiz on. So we are on sport here, Kenny. Would you like to go first or second? Uh, can I go second, please? Chris, the finals of which Grand Slam tennis championships are held at the Rod Laver Arena? Is it Australian Open, Wimbledon or French Open? Well, Rod Laver was an Australian from way back, so it must be the Australian Open. It is the Australian Open. Well done. Kenny, your question. What official name is given to the periods in between stages of a triathlon where competitors change equipment for the next discipline? Is that transitions, exchanges or conversions? Looking at it, I don't think it'd be conversions. That sounds too much like rugby. Exchanges doesn't sound like a very sporty word, so I think transitions. Transitions is the right answer. Well done, one each. Chris, back to you. Which famous cricketer was given the middle name St Auburn? Was it Don Bradman, Jack Hobbs or Gary Sobers? Well, Don Bradman was just playing Don Bradman. Gary Sobers was just playing Garfield Sobers. So it must be Jack Hobbs. Let me ask your fellow eggheads here. Anyone? Gary Sobers. Gary Sobers, they all say, Chris. Oh, yeah. Got it wrong. Kenny, which jockey won his first Grand National in 2010 on a horse called Don't Push It. Was it Frankie Dettori, Tony McCoy, or Mick Kinane? Well, I, I'm not quite sure. I'm not very big in horse racing, as I like my money too much to gamble it. So I think Frankie Dettori, he's been around for quite a long time. Tony McCoy, again, more recently. So I'd like to think it was Mick Kinane. Well, this person won on his 15th attempt. Teammates, do you know? I think it's Tony McCoy. Barry's right. Kenny, Tony McCoy is the right answer. On his 15th attempt, he just failed to capitalise, but don't worry, he's still level. Third question, Chris. At the London 2012 Olympics, what was the first event to take place in the modern pentathlon? Shooting, fencing, or show jumping? Well, show jumping's not in the modern pentathlon, is it? So, uh, neither's fencing, so it must be shooting. Uh, shooting's wrong, Chris, uh -huh. it's fencing. There should be a chance here, Kenny. Get yourself in the final if you get this right. Which Scottish football team is nicknamed the Buddies? Is it Hibernian? Is it St Mirren or Partick Thistle? Well, Hibernian are the High Bees. Partick Thistle, not Yartek Thistle, are the Jags. St Mirren from Paisley and Paisley residents are known as Buddies. So pleased for you, you've got it right. Brilliant. Yeah. You're in the final. He shoots, he scores. <laughs> And how fun, I mean, that is complete coincidence that Partick Thistle's come up there. Absolutely complete and utter coincidence. That just shows how crazy this game is. So well done, Kenny. You've knocked out an egghead. You did indeed shoot and score. If you come back to us, both of you, we will play the final round. Well, that's a turn up, Alan. The relief is indescribable. <laughs> <laughs> and we've, been, we've mentioned a lot of Doctor Who. Yeah. Colin Baker is one of the doctors. I think the sixth one, is that yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Because Tom Baker was the fourth, which yes. is always confusing. Yes. Colin Baker has appeared on this programme, hasn't yes, he? Yes, he has. Yeah. On Celebrity Eggheads. Yeah. And he sat in that very chair. Ah, yes. And, and they took it to sudden death, so hopefully we can do the same. Why did I ever think I was going to be able to surprise you with that information? <laughs> I, I, do you want to know who else was on the team? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got real Doctor Who fans here, Yartik Thistle, and this is what we've been playing towards. It is time for the final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So, Deirdre, David and Barry from Yartik Thistle, and also Chris from the Eggheads, would you please now leave the studio? So here we are, Alan and Kenny. And by the way, I love the T-shirt, Kenny. I th at first, I thought it was a jacket. No, it's actually a replica T-shirt of Peter Davison, the Fifth Doctor's costume, complete with celery in the lapel. And my wife said to me before coming in, please don't wear that T-shirt to go on TV. And I did. <laughs> well, I hope Sorry, it uh, carries you to victory. You're playing to win Yartik Thistle £1,000. Barry, Pat, Judith and Kevin, you're playing for something the money can't buy, which is the Egghead's precious reputation. 
As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. This time the questions are all general knowledge and you are allowed to confer. So, Yartik Thistle, the question is, are your two brains able to defeat the Eggheads 4? And would you like to go first or second? Well, I reckon going first didn't do us very many favours, so uh, uh, going second worked for Kenny, so it's good enough for me. So, first question to the eggheads. How many legs do adult butterflies have? Four, six or eight? They're insects, so they must have six. Yeah. So we go happy with six. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're insects, and the classic number of legs for insects is six. Six is the right answer. Back to you. What are the dark areas called Maria that are seen on the moon? Are they valleys, plains or mountains? Maria, M-A-R-I-A. Maria. The phrase lunar plains yes. is in my head for some reason. I don't know why. Plains, I'm thinking. Yes. I'm, I'm thinking Maria, marine uh, water, uh, dried water, or plains. I think lunar plains. I don't know why. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of tending towards that myself. Um, we think planes. Planes is the right answer. Yeah, really well done. It could, it could easily come adrift on that. OK, kids. M. Diddy was a nickname given to which public figure when serving time in prison? Was it Geoffrey Archer, Martha Stewart or Jonathan Aitken? Well, they all done time. time. Martha Stewart is American. Yeah, that's right. perhaps the... a slight... And she, yeah. Martha, it could be M. But, uh... What's the Diddy yeah. bit, then? Well, well, she's my style, God, isn't it? No, no, some sort was... of play on P Diddy, but obviously, but um, but that was she was before never heard P Diddy. Never nickname when she for Jeffrey Archer or Jonathan Aitken. Yeah. Wasn't. I'm sure if, we'd have, if they'd have been given that, we'd have heard that in the press. I can't right. come up with anything from either of them that would relate to that. No. But, mm. uh, anyway, yeah, well, we don't. We've not heard it before. Um, in a way, it almost looks because her name begins with M. It almost looks too obvious in a way. But we'll go with Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart is correct. Mm. I don't know this myself, but I, I'm, yeah, I'm assuming it's a play on P. Diddy. Yeah, a play on P. Diddy, yeah, obviously. Must but, maybe, um, does Diddy mean small in America, like it does slang-wise here? Mm, not really. And well, Diddy not means small M, I don't know. It's the idea she was down with the, the rappers in jail, wasn't it, I suppose? Oh, I suppose, yes, that would make sense, yeah. That's what the fun, yeah, the fun okay. of it is. Yeah. All right, your second question. In French, the word for inch is the same as the word for which body part? Is it ear, nose or thumb? Right. Knees. Thumbs about an inch, isn't it? But, uh, um, I'm trying to think. What? No. Oh, I wish I paid me more attention to this one. Jomb is leg. Yeah. Tent is head. Knees. I think it's either ear or thumb. Thumb because that's probably about, about mm. an inch. Um, in front. Uh, an ear because I seem to remember one of the, the bones in the inner ear being called something like inch, inch and mm -hmm. and the ear or thumb. I can thumb. Okay, yeah. we'll go with thumb. We're going to go with thumb after all that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great discussion. Thumb is the right answer. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we are. Third question to the Eckheads. Jules Cantini whose house became a museum in Marseille in 1916, was noted as a worker in which material? Is it marble, glass or steel? It suggests he was dead, mm. really. Was he well, dead then? His house became a museum. Mm. Logically. Sort of Logically. suggests. Well, well later, after glass he in died. That period, wasn't yeah, sadly, I haven't actually... Yeah. One bit of France I haven't actually been to in Marseille. Mm, it could be an artist in steel, but it's slightly unusual. I mean, yes, it's either glass or marble, I would think. Yes, I, think mm. I would think so. I would, wouldn't think it was steel. Well, I don't know. Do we have, what, are, what are the various people's inclinations on this? I would make... oh, mine's glass. Yeah, so, same here. But... I think mine is glass, because you might have heard of it if it was marble. Yeah, well... If it was a sculptor. Maybe, maybe. Mm. Yeah. We, we've, unfortunately, we've never heard of the man, so <clears throat> that does make it a bit of a one-in-three guess. And technically, it could have been, well, technically, it could have been any of those. So, on balance, we're going to go for glass. You were heavily going for glass in as much as you can when you're guessing. Mm. Yeah. And it's marble, eggheads. Mm. Never heard Ooh, of it. Ooh, interesting now. How's that, Yartek Thistle? You played very well. You got yourselves a chance here of the jackpot. So, just get this right, and you've taken the contest, and you are officially cleverer than the eggheads.
which vocal group was originally formed to serve as a backing group for Clyde McFatter? Is that the Drifters, the Temptations, or the Cadillacs? I seem to recall the Drifters are, I can't think of them being particularly harmonized as a group. Mm. I think uh, I can only, I might be completely wrong, but I think I only tend to remember the lead vocal and not harmonies. The Temptations, uh, now Temptations, I'm thinking the Foundations did Build Me Up Buttercup. Um, mm. Temptations did. Well, I haven't a clue in this one, I'll be honest, but <laughs> I'm thinking of the words of wet, 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 gimme, 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 temptation, as a complete guess. Um, I think probably... I just, temptations go, is Temptations just, is kind of, it's the one that's but kind I, of... It's a complete guess. I think we're going to go for the Temptations. It's not the Temptations, oh. it's the Drifters. Oh, oh. It's the Drifters. There we go. Hey, kids, we go to sudden death. Gets a bit harder, I don't give you alternative answers. Galileo Galilei Airport is located in which Italian city? Pisa. Pisa, isn't Pisa, it? Definitely. Yeah. Pisa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pisa. That's Pisa. That is Pisa. Hang on in there, get this one right, the contest goes on. Sudden death, though, I don't give you alternatives. In which year of the 1960s was there no Christmas speech broadcast by the Queen? Right, mm. so why, why would there be no... Christmas speech. Uh, assassination of Kennedy in 63. That's... It's close to Christmas. Um, November the 22nd. Uh, the day before the first episode of Doctor Who, of course. Sorry, there, there weren't any other... I'm just trying to think, sort of, were there any, you know, sort of anything related to the Commonwealth, perhaps, that could have affected it with... Yes. Um, the only thing I can think of in the 60s is the assassination of Kennedy. Okay. Well, and if that's all we can think of then, and it's with, within, within a month of, of Christmas. Mm. So um, we're going to say 1963 as a mark of respect for the assassination of Kennedy. Well, you were in a position in this contest a moment ago where had you got an answer right, a drifter's answer, you would have beaten the eggheads because they'd let you in. I wonder if you've got this right, the year of the assassination of JFK. That didn't stop the Queen oh. doing a speech. It was actually 69 because of the investiture of Prince Charles and a documentary about the royal family. She thought they were being overexposed. The answer is 1969. So uh. we say sorry, Yartek Thistle. And congratulations, Eggheads, you have won. Well, the joy of this game, you, you, you started with some difficulties there, but then came through so strongly in the final and really were within a few inches on a question card of taking the eggheads. Well, we've done exactly the same as the uh, Doctor Who team that came on. We've taken it to sudden death and lost on the final question. <laughs> so uh, so we, we can be satisfied with that. More than satisfied and really nice to see you playing as well. Thank you for coming in. Commiserations to Yartek Thistle. The eggheads have done what comes naturally to them and they reign supreme over Quizland once again. I'm only pausing over that because they've had their problems recently. It does mean that you won't be going home with the £1,000. So the money rolls over to our next show. Eggheads, very well done. Maybe you'll build up a bit of a run again. Join us next time to see if a new team of challengers have the brains to defeat the Eggheads. £2,000 says they don't. Till then, goodbye. The birth of photography next on BBC Two as Michael Portillo wends his way through Wiltshire on his railway journey. And later, catch up with some of those challenging renovation projects one year on with Restoration Home at eight.